Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to show you how to install Ruby on Rails on Windows with a Linux subsystem for Windows. This is the best way to install Ruby on Rails, so let's get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do is search up turn Windows features on or off. These are just some settings that we have to turn on or turn off for the Linux subsystem for Windows. And so the first one that we're looking for is called virtual machine platform. So here we just have to tick this virtual machine platform. This is going to install some packages. There are two more. The next one is called Windows Hypervisor Platform. Tick that one. And then the last one, the last one is called Windows Subsystem for Linux. So tick that one as well, and then you're good to go. As you can see, it's applying changes now. It asks that I restart my computer, so I'm going to go ahead and restart it. Okay, so now that I have restarted my computer, what I'm going to do is go into the Microsoft Store, and then we're going to install the Windows Terminal. If you've already got the Windows Terminal, then you can skip ahead to the next step. But pretty much the Windows Terminal is a really handy terminal, which makes it easier to develop because you can select or which CLI you're going to use, which is extremely handy. So I'm going to click install on the Windows Terminal. If Microsoft Store is not working for you, try and get it to work. But if it somehow does not work, then you can probably get it online by searching up the Windows Terminal. This step is not absolutely required, but it's just a handy thing that I like to do in my way of installing Rails. The next thing that we definitely need to do is search up Ubuntu. We're going to install Ubuntu and make sure to get the long-term support version, which is LTS. So currently it's version 22.04.5. It probably doesn't matter which version it's going to be. The steps are probably going to remain the same. So click install, and this is going to take a while because it's quite heavy, 322 megabytes. And once Ubuntu has been installed, we're going to go and open it up to set it up. It's going to say installing. This may take a few minutes, so we're just going to let it run for as long as it takes. Then it asks for a Unix username. This can be anything. Try and make it as short and as simple as possible. I'm just going to say M-A-L, Mal. It was shortened for my name, Malaki. Hit enter, and then a password. And again, try to use a short password that you will remember. Don't worry that it's not showing up when you actually type the keys into your keyboard, it is working. Then hit enter, and then it says retype the new password. Hit enter, and then it says installation successful. So now that we have Ubuntu installed on our Windows machine, we technically already have a Windows subsystem for Linux. Now all we have to do is install Ruby on Rails on it, and then we're done. So to do that, I like to follow this digital ocean guide for this exact Ubuntu version. So I'm just going to start by running this command, copy and pasting. I'll have the link to this website in the description, sudo apt update. So we're going to go, we're first going to start up the windows Ubuntu and it's going to be purple on default. And we're going to say sudo apt update password for mail Enter the password. And then it's going to start working. So that's the first command. Next, we have to install the dependencies required to install Ruby. So this is a long line and I recommend you copy and paste it instead of typing it all out. So go to the description where you'll find this website and then copy and paste the line. It asks for 226 megabytes of additional disk space. We're just going to say yes, we're going to allow that. Make sure you have enough disk space. After installing the dependencies, you can install RBNV itself. This is a Ruby version package manager and it's really useful to install, so make sure to install it. So we're going to copy and paste this command to install the script from GitHub and pipe it directly into Bash using the installer. And now it's installing RBENV. And it says after reloading your terminal window, RBENV should be, should be good to go. And the next thing that we have to do is add it to our path so that we can use RBENV command line utility. Then we have to add this line to our file so that it loads automatically. So go ahead and run that command and then apply the changes you made to your file to the current session. So run that command. And then if you run type rbenv, you should get this. Now, finally, we're going to install Ruby on Ubuntu. So we're going to hit clear and then we're going to run our first command and it's going to be rbenv install l. So we're going to type rbenv install dash l. These are the versions that were these are the, these are the current versions that are available to install. I'm going to install the newest version simply because it it's the most up to date. So I'm going to run rbenv install 3.3.5. That should install that Ruby version. And so now that that Ruby version has successfully been been installed, 
all we have to do is run rbnv global 3.3.5 and that way we're going to actually set that ruby version as the new default so after you've done this that means ruby is successfully installed and you can do commands like ruby dash v and you should get a ruby version rbnv is useful because you can then install a new ruby version and then just quickly change the the version of ruby you're using using this rbnv global command and then that's really handy if you want to quickly work on different projects so now we're going to be working with gems gems are the way ruby libraries are distributed the first thing that we're going to do is run this command so that we don't install the documentation every time we install a gem which is just a package so run this command echo gem no document dot gem or c that's done and then we're going to install the bundler the bundler is a tool that manages gem dependencies for each project so run the, the gem install bundler command it shouldn't take that long and now that we've done and installed the bundler we can actually start to install ruby on rails so i'm going to go clear and then what we can do is just we can install rails so i'm going to say gem install rails and I'm not going to specify the version because if I don't do that, it's going to install the newest version, which is exactly what I want. So just say gem install Rails. And this might take a while because Rails is a big gem. Even though it is actually a framework, it's installed as a gem. And now that that is installed, we can now run Rails-V. And as you can see, we have Rails 7.2.1.2. So now all I'm going to do is run clear. I'm going to run make dear and we're going to call it Rails. And then I'm going to go cd into Rails. And then I'm going to run a new Rails command and see if it works. So Rails new, and we're going to call it project1. So hit enter. So hit enter. And as you can see, our first project1 is being created. And so that's the job successfully completed. Ruby on Rails has been successfully installed. One more thing to note, I'm running a Ruby on Rails mentorship program for people who want to learn Ruby on Rails really quickly. You can find more information about it on Patreon. And I really think it's an extremely useful tool for beginners and intermediates alike. Check it out in the description for more. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you in future videos.